um, we are going to go ahead and get started. This is going to go on all day, so I'm sure people will be coming and going throughout the day. But uh, I also want to welcome a special guest today. I didn't know we were getting. Barry Browning is the president of the Southport Historical Society. So everybody bow in his direction. So. <laughs> Uh, there you are. There you are. I was like, look, I was look. I knew you were in a blue shirt, so I'm looking at the wrong blue shirt. Anyway, this is this is Mr. Browning. <laughs> but anyway, we're glad to have you here. One of my goals. I this is my sixth year as president of the Franklin Township Historical Society, and one of my goals in recent years has been to try to get area historical societies to work together, maybe coordinate some events. So I always send our information to Irvington, to Southport Perry, to Beach Grove, and so forth, because we're all dealing with the same situation, which is we've got a lot of local history. Uh, we don't, we have all volunteers, probably not a lot of money, at least I, I know I speak for our society, I don't know about everybody else's, and we have only usually a handful of people to pull off the impossible, but somehow we do it. So anyway, I wanted to thank you all for being here. And um, you are sitting in the former Big Run Baptist Church. This building was built in 1871. The previous building was a wood frame building. And when it became too small for the congregation, they literally moved that church across the road and started building this building. What they did when, um, Larry, could, oh, I don't know, there's a gentleman. When you come in, sir, could you close that door to keep the air conditioning in, please? Thank you so much. Um, they, when they started building this building, they made the bricks on this site. So out here in this yard, they dug the mud, they boxed it, and they fired them so that the bricks were actually made, and 150 years later, the bricks look darn good. So they obviously did a good job. All of our glass, except for one or two panes, is the original 150-year-old glass. Um, some decades ago, a couple of windows were broken, and those were replaced. But if you look at it right, and you see the waviness of the glass, that's because we're dealing with 150-year-old glass in the windows. Now, this building continued functioning as a church up until the 1970s. And in fact, we have a gentleman here who's going to be speaking later today. Mr. Toll actually preached at this church when it was a church. So that's pretty cool because we've got somebody who's got firsthand knowledge of the building. So, but one of the things I promised you, for those of you who received a schedule, was organ music. Nobody wants to sit and listen to me talk in definitely, but they would like to hear our original pump organ. And we not only have an original pump organ, we have an original organ. I'm teasing about that. No, Jim, <laughs> Jim is not 150 years old. But, but this is Mr. Jim Kemp, and he's going to come up and give us our first round of organ music on the, the church's pump organ. And uh, Jim's going to explain to you why you need a pump organ in a building that is built with electricity. Well, of course, a pump organ is similar to a player piano. Many of you may have remembered that from way back when. Um, this one, I have the privilege of playing usually once a year. So I'm happy to be here today in the summer because we do a Christmas program here. Nancy and the, the Historical Society put it on. They call it an old-fashioned Christmas. And I'm hoping that we can do that this year in person. We couldn't do it last year. But we came and we filmed it. But with no audience in that one, I that way. Um, the pump organ, of course, you have to actually pump. Maybe later in the day I can explain a little bit about how it works, but before there was air compressors to feed what would be a pipe organ, a modern day pipe organ, this is what was had. So this is actually a pretty good sized organ for a room this size. They had many smaller versions. I have a smaller version at home in my living room. It's half of the stops on it. For those that can see, the uh, white buttons there across, that's the stops. And each of them represents a set of reeds that sound a little differently. Even though we're in a church, I'll be playing some more liturgical music later, but I'm gonna start off with a patriotic number. Um, you, um, the Grand Old Flag.
another, or uh, um, are we going to move on? You with know what? Let's do one more, and okay. then we will introduce Mr. Toll, who's going to tell us about the church. Okay. Um, I'll make this one a church type hymn. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. But you can sit down if you like <laughs> today. So um, one thing real quick before I start that makes this really special for me is Nancy's going to introduce Arvid down here who preached this church a little later. But I've known Arvin for the past probably four years. Um, he, where he lives in a retirement community, can I say where it is? Yes. Crestwood Village South. I also retired from banking after 40 years and now I have a job there. So I've known Arvin for these past four years and it's just wonderful to be able to to work with Arvin and the others in his building around. And the one thing about retired people that live there is they love the old hymns of the faith. So I do a thing every two or twice a month on uh, Fridays there and the assisted living facility. We call it Hymns with Jim, because my name's Jim and I play hymns, and I print the words out in 18 point font so they can read them, and most of them don't need it. You know why? Because most of them grew up in a situation much like this, or a little bit maybe more modern, but still, knowing those old hymns of the faith which have such a wonderful message. Stand up for Jesus. Get my pedals out here. <laughs> I mean, very fortunate as a society, Jim Kemp available to play at our events because it's not just anybody that can walk up to a antique pump organ and handle it. And I think Jim, with his lifelong love of keyboards, probably secretly caresses it a few times and pats it to reassure it that he knows what he's doing. 